Hey, it's Pulse for Pioneer DJ, and I've had a lot of DJs ask me, how do I use the beat grid in a transition track or a track where the tempo changes from one to another or back uh, during the mix? Well, it's a, it's a bit of a tricky thing to set the grid for those, so I've created this video as sort of a tutorial in setting a grid for a track that changes. This is not a dynamic track where you're dealing with like a live drummer. If you are doing that, you want to make sure that you've got your track analyzed with the analysis mode set to dynamic. For most other electronic percussion where the, the beat is consistent between uh, each drum, you want to set it to normal. And you can set your BPM range to assist it when it's doing its analysis. So if you have a lot of low tempo stuff, you can do uh, a lower range and it'll be more accurate in detecting that and setting it. So I've got some tracks here that I've run as just a straight up analysis, just imported, and you can see that first off, they're, they're wrong. So this is a transition track that starts at 135 and will transition down to 76. So let me show you how this is set. First thing you're gonna do is go in and find the first beat of the, the track and may as well set it there. And I'm also gonna set my cue point in case I need to jump back. Now, right off the bat, I can tell you that this is, this is wrong. Uh, I should be at the 135. So I'm going to just move down in here and bring that up to 135 by bringing it in. I can see my next beat is, I just passed it. Uh, the, the, uh, this is the second beat here I'm trying to line up. Let's move down in here and help it a little bit. So I just line up that second mark and I can see the the other ones are falling in place as well if you turn on the metronome you can actually hear when these are in the correct position so I'm gonna play through and I know that the transition starts uh, around 17 I think it's 17 bars so far these are all bang on to where I want them So I'm going to play it through. Okay, so 17 is where my transition starts. And you can see now it's starting to get sloppy and these are falling off. So I'm going to back it up to 17. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to position it, the playhead on that marker. And I'm going to click this button here. Now this is make an adjustment from the current position. So when I do that, you can see all the markers to the left sort of disappear. And now I've only got bars to the right. What happens is now I can make these adjustments to, to tighten the position of these other markers. And I'm going to go to the next, next bar and I'm going to click this button again. Now what's going to happen is it's going to, when I'm doing this, I'm making the dynamic spacing of the beats change and I'm setting them to the positions I want. And now I'm going to lock it in by clicking on this, uh, this adjustment, um, button here. Don't use this uh, this button. If you're tempted to come in and, and find the first beat here and click this, what happens is it shifts the other one off. So it's uh, it's a bit of a, a quirk that you need to use this guy here, but you want to make the adjustment first. So bring your beats into the right length, adjust the measurement of that bar, and then go and position the playhead, click the button, and you can do this along for any period of the transition. I know mine goes to about 25, so I'm going to bring it in a little bit. And you can always go back and with the metronome turned on, you can go in and, and cue and, and check and make sure that these are correct. And I'm going to bring this one in. Oops, too much. Holding it down will make it move faster, but sometimes I, uh, I end up overshooting, so you just end up clicking a whole bunch of times. That looks about right. And that's pretty close. So it could have been in production that this was, you know, sort of irregular, but it, it doesn't really matter. I'm just uh, adjusting my grid. Okay, and 24, almost there. I'm gonna set that one. And now 25, this will be the first bar of the new tempo. Now, what you will notice is that I'm not actually at the 76. I'm double that. Um, so because the, the track actually uses a technique of speeding up to get to a double tempo and then drops it to half, uh, here's what you'll, you'll hear through. So I'm going to back it up. You can hear the transition.
Now this portion I don't want to have at this tempo and the beauty of record boxes they actually have the ability to do a half value so I've dropped it in half just by clicking that button and now I need to you know tighten up the, the beats a little bit so I can slide that in and realistically from here because my first beat is locked at this position and the tempo doesn't change for the rest of this track <clears throat> excuse me I'm going to keep it at he at this point and not use this adjustment button anymore I'm gonna go through the track and see that you know I need to you know tighten up a little bit here and there uh, but basically once I've got the uh, the, the BPMs and the grids in the right range, just a small adjustment down this end of the track only makes a tiny adjustment at the other end. So I can see that when I'm trying to adjust the bars and the beats towards the end of the track, that I'm going to be in on, a, on an accurate here, and then I don't need to worry so much about them coming off the beginning of the track, because the, the changes are amplified the further down you go. So at the closest to the, the zero point, which would be this, this beat here, the more change I make here, the bigger the change at the end of the song. However, inversely, if I go down to the end of the song, any changes I make down here are going to be minor in terms of changes made at the beginning of the song. So now I can see that my track is at 76. This is the measured BPM. So when I play back here and I start running through, it'll go from my 135 and change. I'm not worried about that. And you can see in each each section where I made that adjustment where I clicked, it's actually changing the tempo. And you can hear that in the metronome as well. And there it jumps down to my 76. So playback of this track will result in it changing from 135 down to 176. And any song you have synced with it will do the same thing. Uh, just to demonstrate that, let's go into performance mode and let's put in this other track which is... Uh, at uh, 74 BPM. So what I'm going to do is actually oh, this its grid is off as well. Let's do a quick adjustment. And here, in case you were wondering where to find that in performance mode, set the first beat and 74 BPM is fine. So let's go back over to pad mode. Okay. So if I hit play on this track, this is the master. This one I'm going to sync. Oh no, 135 BPM. Well, that's that's way too fast for it. That's not what I wanted to do. I'm not mixing it here anyways. But what you'll see is as the track goes through, and you get a little warning here, it's above 100%, but hey, check it out, 76. So it automatically adjusted. So even if I were to come back into the beginning of the track and cue it up and play it, it's playing to match. It's trying to match the, the tempos of those songs. And it'll continue to speed it up, and it'll give us that warning that's over 100%, so it can't really maintain it. Which I really don't care, because I'm not mixing at this point. But there you go. Jumped it down to 76. So it does match, it does maintain, whichever one is the master, the sync will always follow. So now I want to show you another track that has a couple of changes in it. So we're going to open this uh, this guy here and I notice right away of course that the initial beat is set at the incorrect position I want at the beginning of the track so that's the one I click uh, now it's measured 126 which is pretty accurate and with the beat that metronome on you can hear that's where it's, it's good okay so this is actually where it, it makes a change here this is the last beat where it's, uh, it's consistent at 126 and that it slows down here. So I'm going to go to this position, I'm going to line up the playhead with that marker, and I'm going to click on the make adjustment from current position. So it's going to lock everything to the left, and now from the right I'm going to actually slide it so that this marker aligns with this beat here because this is where the transition is made. So I'll slide those up. Okay, so now I'm going to... Now this might not be entirely accurate because this this transition is not uh, linear. Uh, you may see that these these beats don't line up on this thing, but I, I really don't care because again I'm not playing my a, a mix over this portion of the track. I just want to make sure that any effects that I'm going to be running are going to have uh, tempo matched to uh, to the timing. So what I'm going to do is align that playhead and click on the button again, and now it's locked everything to the left. 
Now, the tempo to the right is not correct. I need to adjust this, so let's just listen and see how I can line it up. So this actually looks like it's the second beat, so let's the start of the second bar. So let's line that up. And I don't need to, again, I don't need to click on uh, the, the adjustment grid because everything in this, in this section is going to be the same tempo. So I'm just clicking to make small adjustments. So I'm just going to bring it back in a little bit. Just small adjustments down this end. Okay, so now this is actually the, the last beat of the short of the low tempo section, and it's going to start to speed back up. You can see that they're getting closer together. So I'm going to click on the make adjustments, and now I'm going to. So now I'm going to actually dial it in for each section. I'm going to bring those back in and hit this here. And again, I'm going to do it for each bar. Bring it back in. My cats are meowing in the background. And set that. So I'm going to bring it to here. Just by clicking, 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 clicking. And there we go. So this is where I want to put it. Bring in the playhead of that grid marker to that playhead. So I'm going to bring it in again. That I think it was pretty close, so I'm not too worried about that one. No, that one was a little bit off, so I'm going to bring it back. I th I, I'm happy with that because over here it's actually it's actually on grid for here. So I'm gonna click on that one to lock it in, and here I can see I need to to bring it back into that 126 range. Some small adjustments. Wrong way. Now again, remember the further you get on the song, the the difference, the impact will have on the um, uh, this these buttons will have on the the changing of the the spacing. So again, a, a large change at the beginning, a small change at the end. The further you are from the last lock point. So here I'm pretty pretty much bang on. I'm gonna just dial it in a little bit and bring the track back and play it with the metronome on. Happy with that. So let's go back into the beginning of the transition. So that's the transition there. So you can see that the BPM will change along with those, and now I've got a grid that's locked in. And if I want to make sure that I'm not going to accidentally change this, I can actually click this lock button, and now it prevents any additional changes in future. Accidental changes, that is. If you want to come back in and change it, you can unlock it and make changes again. So now there's the transition back out of the, out of the low tempo. And you see the BPMs jumping right back up to 126. So that's it. It's very easy to use these once you know the tricks. Just remember to lock your grid on the point where your, your playhead is matching on the beat and then use the spacer to the right of that point. If you have any other questions, please come and find us in the forums. My name is Pulse. Thanks for watching.